Hello world and welcome to this fourth episode of How to Code That and today is gonna be pretty exciting because we're gonna play with particles. So today we're gonna try to recreate an image using particles and then we're gonna move these particles in a 3D environment using 3GS. Uh, we are not going to do the cursor effect on this tutorial otherwise the video will be way too long but we're gonna still play with the waves, make it appear from front or from the sides and that's it but you can always play with the demo the link is just in the description so you can click on it and try it don't forget to share the channel subscribe you can also get access to the code by subscribing to my patreon or supporting me on my patreon i would say so to make this tutorial you have to be i would say a pretty experimented front-end developer and you need to know the basics of 3GS and you also need to know what shaders are. Like at least you need to know how vertex shader works and how a fragment shader works. If you don't, you can always try the exercise and maybe it will work for you as well. And please, if you guys did the exercise, uh, don't forget to put it in the commentary so I can see it. I'll be super excited to, to see what are the results. So feel free to send me uh, your work. All right, I think we can begin. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna download the vit3js template that I made. The link is just below in the description. So click on the link and then either clone the repository or download it. I'm gonna download it, add a zip. Okay, then we're gonna open it in our text editor. Okay, so as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff already, um, but we will check that later. So first, we're gonna run npm install as usual. As usual, sorry. Uh, okay. Then we're gonna run npm run dev inside our terminal. Here we're gonna click on the link, and you should have that. If you don't have that, pause the video and make sure everything worked and you downloaded the correct template and you did the right command. Okay, <clears throat> so basically what we have here. So we just have like an index.html. Anything that is related to 3 uh, is in this file. So in the scene file, you can see the index is importing this as a class. So it's kind of like a component of the main scene that we're using. And we're basically gonna work mainly here and in a bit in the shaders that we will see later. So here we just have a scene with some stats, GUI, a renderer, a camera, and as you can see, a sphere. So first of all, we're gonna clean a bit this mess. So we don't need the footer in the index.html, so you can remove it. And we can also remove the title. We have a bunch of CSS, but we are not gonna use the CSS at all for this tutorial. Okay, great. So now it looks better. We can start work in the scene. All right. So as you can see, everything in is, is in the component. And here we are rendering a sphere. But we can already start to render what we want. And what we want to create this effect? Well, we want actually to create particles. So for that, we're going to create what we call a custom geometry. In SwitchRest, you can create custom geometries using a buffer geometry. So we're gonna build our own geometry. Okay, so let's see in the doc how it looks like, okay. So here in the SwitchJS doc, you, have, you can get access to the buffer geometry and that's what we're gonna use. All right, so For that, here we are seeing that we're creating a sphere. We're gonna create, remove that, and we're gonna say set particle, particles, sorry, grid. Because we're gonna create a grid of particle. <clears throat> you can also remove the comments. Okay, so here they're saying, okay, how to use a buffer geometry. So you create the class buffer geometry then you put your vertices inside of it 
So this is one coordinate of each 3D point of what you're drawing. So here we're saying basically the first point is in on the x axis minus one, on the y axis minus one, and on the z axis it's one. Then we have a second point here, and then another point here. And then we have again three points. <clears throat> Why is that? Well, you'll see, but this is basically a triangle, right? Because it's like three points. And this is another triangle. And based on the coordinates, this is going to this is going to create just a normal square, right? So this is basically created two triangles that is creating creating a, uh, a square. So let's see. <clears throat> Here we're gonna replace that. Here I'm gonna use that. So feel free to find that in the doc in buffer geometry. Here I'm just importing things. So we are creating an attribute for the position. So the attribute is what you're giving to the vertex shader. And we are giving the position of each um, of each point in the vertex shader. Then we have a classic mesh basic material. And then we have a mesh. Classic mesh and material. So let's add this to our scene. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Okay, well, at least something is showing up. We have a red square. <laughs> Great. Well, that's because, uh, as I said, well, I should, this is really ugly. That's because of my prettier. I should not use my prettier on this type of things. Okay, so basically here we have, whoop. So we have six points in total. One point here, two point, two third, second point here, third point here, so that's one triangle. And then we have like four point here, five here, and then six here. I'm not sure about the other, but basically that's creating a red square. Okay, something is off though. You can see the Z axis, it's one, right? Well, that's because as you can see here, for each coordinate, this needs to be zero. So if I D only on one, it's gonna create a triangle so I'm moving this point here. Then I'm moving this point. Then this point, etc. So that's really how you make custom geometry is really by giving a point, giving coordinates, sorry, for each point of your geometry. So that can take long, but don't worry, we're gonna do just something really simple. Okay, so basically we are just saying that our we are drawing a square with position 0, z, and minus 1, 1, 1, and minus 1 for the x and y axis. All right, cool. OK, now that we've done that, let's position the camera a little bit different. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, we are changing, we are creating a camera here. So we're going to just uh, put that basically in the centers because we, we basically want to look at it if it's like flat, like a flat, flat image. So we just want it to be x and y zero. And we're gonna take a little bit of, uh, we're gonna just go back a little bit by increasing the z value. Okay, so that will be better to work with the image, right? Okay, so now, uh, let's proceed. So here we want to build particles. As you can see, this is not like a normal geometry, right? There is no triangles, as you can see. This is drawing by points, right? Particles. So to do that with 3GS, you can use something that is called point. Simple as that. So in instead of using um, 
So we have a mesh here. We're going to use a point. And the difference, basically, 3GS is doing that for you under the hood. But in WebGL, what's happening? It's that when using a, a mesh with 3GS, you are actually drawing your object in the scene <clears throat> by using GL triangles. So most of the time when you're creating 3D, that works for every environment in 3D, not just JavaScript and WebGL. Most of the time, this you are basically drawing triangles, right? To even to do like any shape, like even like a bottle, I don't know. You're gonna use triangle and make a lot of love of triangle. You can also that call that polygon, and it's gonna create a shape. That's how we make 3D. But here you have other ways to draw things in WebGL. And here we're gonna use what we call draw points. So here instead of saying for each of these coordinates, draw me a triangle, like it was doing. Remember, two triangles in the rectangle. Here we're going to say, hey, for each of these coordinates, just draw me a point. And that's basically what we want, right? So good things for us is that in 3GS, point is doing it for us. But we also need to use a point material and not um, mesh basic materials. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So let's see. Here we're going to use point materials. I just need to import it here. In 3GS, I'm importing the point materials. And points here. <clears throat> Again, I'm importing everything using VS Code. All right. OK. So now we have our point material and our points. So let's see how it looks like. All right, cool. Uh, it seems to work pretty much. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> we have like really big particles, uh, but we only see four, right? And that's weird because we should see one particle per coordinate, right? Well, that's not weird because two of the points are ex ex exactly the same coordinates, right? So this one is exactly the same as this one. So I guess we can remove one. And I guess this one is exactly the same as well. All right, so here, as you can see, we have our four points, and it's working, right? Perfect. OK, so we have seen that uh, for each, <clears throat> I mean, we are creating what we call a float32 array. And for each of these. Every three times, we are doing a, a coordinate of a point. Then we are creating what we call an attribute. We call it position. And we are giving this position attribute to the geometry. Then 3GS is doing the shaders for us. And it's using this coordinate to write the point. So what we want to do here <coughs> is we want to have uh, a lot of lot of uh, coordinates, right? <clears throat> so basically, we also want a ratio. So here we're going to use the ratio uh, 16 per 9. So OK, let's start. And let's say we want a number of <clears throat> number of um, columns. It's going to be, uh, we want 16 columns and a number of line. It's going to be 9 lines. All right. OK, cool. And then we're going to just make uh, a loop inside a loop, basically. Uh, the first one will be for the columns. And the second one will be for the <coughs> uh, for the, the line, right? If that makes sense. That way, we're going to just make a grid. OK. Then we're going to create an array called vertices. That's basically are going to be our point. <clears throat> our co the coordinates of our points, right? Then here for each of this, we're going to create 
point. And we are going to put, remember, we have to have three coordinates in a row. Uh, that's going to be from uh, 0 to uh, whatever you want. So here we're going to go from 0 to 16 and from 0 to 9. So in x will be the colon, right? The line will be what? the y axis, like that and like that. And then in the z axis, we're going to just put 0 because for now we are just want it to be flat. So we have this point. And then, <coughs> as you can see, we're going to uh, use the vertices and we're going to push this value inside of it. Uh, push point. All right. Uh, I just need to rename that. And I'm just going to see what we have in here. Just going to log that. Sorry, I just increased the <clears throat> text editor, so maybe it's easier for you to, to read. Um, <clears throat> and I also I moved this here. OK, so here I, I was logging the vertices. So as you can see, we have what we want, right? Because we have coordinates from 0 to, to, to 16 and from 0 to 9. Problem is, this is not really what we want, right? But because as you can see in the float32 array, all the numbers are just following each other. There is no array per basically coordinates. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to just basically here just need to remove the brackets, right? Cool thing is JavaScript is that you can do easily that using the spread operator. So when using the spread operator, it's going to just basically take these three values, put them inside of um, in, inside this, this array, but it's just going to take the values of here. It's not going to take the array. It's going to just take each value each value of the array sorry and just place it inside the vertice so let's see okay perfect so now as you can see all the coordinates are following each other i know it looks worst right but that's how webgl works and that's how it's able to read the coordinates all right cool so we have our values and here, we need to put our vertices, right? And let's see. All right. Oh, cool. So looks like it's working. I think we have uh, 16 vertices in the line and 9 in the, in the Y, right? So I think that's looking great, actually. Uh, but now we want to center it, right? It's not centered. Well, thanks to 3GS, it's super easy to center. You can just do geometry, and you have a method that's going to center all of our coordinates. Here you go. So here, each point now is, in, is centered. OK, great. Uh, it's great, but I think it's still missing some particles. Right? It's, it's not going to have a beautiful effect with only this amount of particle. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add a multiplier. <coughs> multiplier, and we're going to say, let me check what I've put. OK, I said 18. 18. <coughs> and we're going to multiply this number. All right, cool. So now I think that's better, right? We have, uh, well, I just need to reverse. <laughs> the values, I think, are reversed lines and columns. All right, better. So now we have a lot of particles that we will be able to play with. So that's that's better, right? <clears throat> and that's what we're going to have here. OK. So we also need to move the camera back. Otherwise, it's too close to the camera. OK, I think it's looking great now. Great. 
Okay, now it's gonna be a little bit more complex because, okay, that's great. 3GS is giving us a way to easily create particles and position them, but we have actually no way to interact with them, right? We have no way. We can change the color, but that's pretty much it. <clears throat> and we cannot like make them move or make them take the colors of the texture that we want to like an image, for example, like a landscape, like we are doing it here. Right. So for that, we are gonna have to do our own shader material, our own material. So to do custom materials in 3GS, you have two ways, actually. First one, you can use what is called a raw shader material. So it's basically doing the same. You have to give it a vertex shader. So the vertex shader is for the position of each coordinate and a fragment shader. The fragment shader is for the colors of the of your shader, basically, of your object. So with the raw shader material, you have to write everything, all the shader in GLSR from zero, and same from the fragment shader. So that's great if you're a boss in shaders, but uh, sometimes it's great to use the shader material because when using the shader material, you have already some logic that 3GS has implemented. That means you can use includes inside your shaders that will give you what uh, 3GS is using already in their other materials. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the shader materials and we're gonna try to just replace it with the point material. And then that way we will be able to change this point material and add our own logic behind. All right, so to do that, let's use the shader material. Okay, so as you can see here, we're not gonna use the, the colors. Okay, so you can import the shader material like that. <clears throat> and here we're gonna add some one vertex shader and one fragment shader. So here, as you can see, I already have a vertex shader and a fragment shader, but we're gonna change that. And we're gonna look in the 3GS GitHub repo uh, what is the shader for points. And if you go to the shader in the, sorry, in the 3GS library, you can find here in renderer shaders, there is what we call the shader lib. And the shader lib is really important because you can find a lot of things that 3GS have made, a lot of shaders, and basically what's happening uh, under the hood. And here, if we go to points.glsl.js, you can here find how he made to render this point material. So you can see there is a vertex shader here and we're gonna just copy and paste. So here, let's copy that. And uh, just to clarify a little bit, everything that you see here, the includes are like um, part of code that 3GS will include for us because we are using the shader material. And all of these includes, you can find them super easily. It's just, remember we were in the in the shaders. So we have shader libs and all these little includes, you can find them in shader shrunk. And here, for example, uh, you can see we have the common include. So this is the code of the common include. So I know that's a bit complex, but it's basically a lot of function that is using, you have the value of P that can be useful. So all this stuff, but you can see we are not gonna use them uh, here. It's just to to see how a point material works, but we're gonna use uh, some of them. We're not gonna use all of them, but some of them. We're gonna use the begin and project vertex. Okay, so that's for the the main vertex. Then let's do the same with the fragment shader. So calculating the colors. <coughs> Okay, cool. So now we have replaced uh, 
that our own vertex with the vertex, the, sorry. We have replaced our own shaders with the shader from 3GS. So now we just need to import them. So we're gonna say import vertex shader from, and here you can see it was, uh, sorry, GLSL slash man dot vert. And then we're gonna do the same, but for the fragment shader. Fragment shader <coughs> is gonna be that frag. So we are importing this, and now we are just need to add them to the shader material. So fragment shader and vertex shader. Um, <clears throat> in JavaScript, when you have the same uh, properties and the same value, I mean, when, when the properties and the value of an object is the same, you can you have a shortcut and you can remove one of them, and it's gonna say, "Oh, import fragment shader for the property fragment shader." Okay, so here we are doing that. <clears throat> now let's see if it worked. Okay. Right, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it's actually working. We have our particles, but they are really small and they are black. Well, the reason why is because we are not giving any colors now. And it's also because the, the thing that we are implementing, the code that we are implementing if, is in there. Okay, so now let's have a look at our first vertex shader. So everything that is here, we actually don't need that for this exercise. So we can easily remove it. Don't need color vertex. We don't need morph color. <coughs> we don't need morph target vertex. It's probably to do some morph morphing stuff that we are not going to use. Here we are not going to use the size attenuation, even though uh, in the demo I'm doing my own thing. Uh, but in this exercise, we won't have time. <coughs> and we are not using the things with the fog, etc. But uh, if you're already in a sweet GS environment with a lot of stuff happening, uh, you can you should actually maybe keep these because they're gonna work with the I don't know if you made a fog in your scene, then your custom shader material will have the fog because you will have the fog code included in your own shader. So that can be convenient. But here we are doing everything almost custom. Okay, so let's have a look at what we kept. <clears throat> so we kept, you can go to shader chunk. In the shader chunk, we seen that we are keeping the begin vertex. And as you can see, the begin vertex is using the position. And I don't know if you remember, but the positions attribute, it's what we are giving. So that's basically all the points that we have created. Here, remember, we are saying set attribute position, and we are giving here object with coordinate of three, and we are doing all of our grid. So this is basically the coordinate of each of the points, each of the vertices. And it would be in, in the transform uh, variable for some reason. And the reason is because then, if we go to the project vertex, okay, project vertex. Uh, okay, as you can see, it's doing some stuff. <clears throat> I'm not gonna go too much into this cell, but that's the model view position. So MVP, as we say in 3D, so that's basically the calculation uh, between the camera, where is the object in the scene, and that is basically the calculation you need to do in WebGL to position an object from the camera with the calculation of the field of view and the perspective, etc. So basically, it's doing all of this for us already. So that way, you, we don't have to write it again. And GL position is the final value that you need to give to the vertex shader. That's always the value of the positions of your coordinates. And here, you can see we have something new that we don't find 
in WebGL when you're using GL triangle, this is not use, this is not working. This is something special for GL point draw. Remember here that we are drawing points. So this thing is basically the size of your uh, points, right? Because we are using points and you can have bigger or smaller points. Here it's using the default value <coughs> from 3GS, but we can add our own value. So let's say, what if we add 10? Okay, you can see we have like a dark plane, but if we zoom into it, see, we see all of our particles. So we are just basically increasing the size of our particles. And that's what we want. Because if we want to use an image, then we will need to, the particles to be pretty big. OK, I don't really like it like that. So we're going to create a uniform. Basically, a uniform is the value that you can give to your shaders in your JavaScript environment. So let's create a uniform here. And we're going to say <coughs> u point size. That will be easier to change it. Uh, value. And we're going to say 8, for example. So we have our uniform. And then here, in the vertex shader, we're going to use u point size uniform and put it here. OK, so now if I'm changing this value, see, it's working. It will be easier to play with JavaScript values. So that's why we're using uniforms here. OK, cool. I think it's working pretty great. But now let's see what we need for the fragment shader. Well, actually, from the fragment shader, we're going to use our own stuff from the beginning. So we can remove basically everything. <laughs> All right, so, so to add the colors in a fragment shader, you have to use gel frag color. And these values are four values, four coordinates, I would say, R, G, B, so for the three colors, and alpha. So here we're going to say vec4 of whatever we want. And let's say we're going to take the red value. So here. Uh, I think I'm having an error. Oh, yeah, I forgot just to. There you go. OK. So now we can have an impact on the color. We can have an impact on the positions. Remember, we're using the positions here. And so we can do our own things, right? So that's pretty great. OK, the first thing we're going to do is that I don't really like these particles. Like, if you look closely to them, I don't know if you can see it, but these are squares, right? And I prefer to have like round, big particles to play with. So to do that, we're going to use uh, a small shader that I've made for Fragment Shader that is basically creating uh, circles based on the UV we are giving. So you're going to see. <clears throat> Here I'm going to use this little function. You will see it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to know much about detail about it, but basically <clears throat> that's what we're going to need. OK. So here, uh, as you can see, so pause the video to write the, the function. But basically, you're giving it a, a coordinate. You're giving it a border. It's basically how smooth the run is going to be. And then it's basically doing like a distance calcule from the center. And it's smoothing the border. And then you apply that to the alpha value of it, 
why the alpha? Well, everything that is not is like outside the circle, you will just make it transparent. And so basically, every value of the for each coordinates that is not in the circle will be transparent. And zero two is the thickness of the the is the border. Yeah. Here I'm using a radius of zero point five to add the middle. Okay. So now let's see. <clears throat> oh, we are right. Nothing changed. Did I miss up something? Yeah. Yes, actually, because you we are actually using alpha here, so transparency. But the thing is that transparency is not available by default in WebGL. In WebGL, you have to add transparent true. Uh, here in 3GS, you just have to put transparent true in the properties of the shader material, and it will do the, the thing for you. So now, if you look closely, OK, I don't know if you really see it, but now these are perfect circle. So that's better. And we can maybe, like if I increase the value, maybe we'll see it better. OK, right, you can see these are circles now. I think it looks better. Cool. So now that we have seen that, I think we can start to add our image and play with that. So for the purpose of this exercise, I was uh, I'm looking for um, 16 by 9 image and black and white because that's one of the create I want to the effect I want to create is basically that everything that is white will be in particles and everything that is too dark will be destroyed and you won't even need it. It's also good for optimization. So here, feel free to pick any image you want. I think I'm gonna take, yeah, take this one for one exercise. Um, here, as you can see in the exercise, I use this one and I also made a transition between other textures and here I basically write some text, but that's a texture. It's kind of cheaty though, I would say, but it's working well. Uh, okay, so here I'm gonna use, for example, this image. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna, where is it? Okay, here, here. And here we have a public folder, images, and it should be there. I'm going to call it image.jpg. It's not original at all. I know. Uh, I think it was that, right? Mm. Yeah, right. Perfect. <clears throat> so we have our image, a nice black and white image. And now we want to display it in this uh, 2D plane, 2D particle plane that we created. All right, so for now, we're going to need to use UVs. But first of all, let's load our image. OK, so as you can see here in the init method, I was already loading an image. I'm using a loader manager that you can find here that is using the texture loader from 3GS and it's gonna basically uh, load your image, wait for it. Once it's done, it's gonna give you an object when you can get access everywhere in the, in the, in the project, you can get access to this texture. So here, Instead of uh, name be it was matcap, we're gonna be image. And image here is going to be JPEG. Feel free to take any images from your project or whatever you want. Something nice. You can also not do that with black and white if you want. Uh, it will work. You will just don't have the discard part, but it will work. <clears throat> okay. So here we are loading an image, and I think it's working. 
So now that we have our image, we're going to need to add it inside our material, right? Remember? So we have our uniform and we're going to add the U texture. And this texture, we're going to add <coughs> the loader manager. We're going to add data set. Then we have to put the name of what you used. So here it's image. And then you're going to use the texture. And that's basically is our texture loaded, ready to use for WebGR. OK, so if you do that, we should have our texture here. Uh, I think I'm just going to remove the, <clears throat> the helper here. Okay, we don't need it really much. Uh, OK. OK, so we have our texture in our shader. And now it's time to do the calculation so it's going to be displayed inside of our grid. OK, so to use the texture, what you want to do in WebGL is to use <coughs> the uniform of it. And it's a sampler 2D. Sampler 2D. And we called it, and then we added in the uniform. So it was U texture, right? So here, <coughs> to create a texture, you have to do something like that, and you have to, to say um, texture 2D. 2D, and you have to put the UVs, and you have to put your texture here. But here, this is not going to work, because first of all, we don't know what the UVs are supposed to be, so the UVs are basically the coordinates from 0 to 1. So 0 is the here in the left, 1 is here for you, and v, 0 is here and 1 is here. <clears throat> but here, we don't have this value in the fragment shader. But to get this value, we're going to use, uh, remember, what we have in our vertex shader. Remember that we basically saying that it's a grid. So each position here, basically, is a texture coordinate that we can use. So for that, we're going to do varying. The varying is a value that you can uh, pass from the vertex to the fragment. You cannot pass directly value to the fragment shader uh, without doing that. So <clears throat> varying, and it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I'll call that. OK, I write that v text code. And this is going to be, remember, at the beginning, our position attributes. <laughs> so the position attributes that was here, we're going to pass it to a variable. But we're going to take only the x and y, right? We don't need to get the z value because it's like flat. <clears throat> And we're going to put it here. OK. Then we're going to pass that inside of Fragment Shader. I'm curious to see uh, if I display that. I'm probably going to have nothing <laughs> uh, working. But let's give it a try. Yeah, first of all, I'm getting an error. but OK, I think it's the texture first, then the UVs. OK, yeah, as you can see, it's not working. And the reason why right, is because here we are calculating the pixel, but for each coordinate. So that's the, it's almost like we were writing the whole texture inside one particle. So it's like super small, we won't even see it. <clears throat> so that's not what we want, right? And plus, I think, yeah, the UVs are not good if we, if we do that. So what we want to do is a little bit of calculation of the UVs to get uh, to separate, for example, this pixel of this particle needs to be that color. So to do that, we're going to use different things. First, we're going to use GL point code. So as you remember, <coughs> uh, yeah, I, think I don't need. I don't need that. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I'm just gonna write again the red, uh, whatever color we want. <clears throat> okay. So as you remember, um, these are the coordinates of one point, right? One particle. So that's basically a value from zero to one. Zero is the top left of the particle, and one is the and one one is the right bottom of the particle. That's how we created. Remember the circle based on the distance. So we're gonna call that, and we're gonna keep it at UVs. Actually, we can use the UVs here like that. <clears throat> and then we're gonna need to apply some things. So first thing we need to do, I know it's weird, but we're gonna need to revert the Y. Uh, this reason is because uh, for some reason here, the UVs are not as revert compared to the UVs of our image, of our grid, I would say. Make to make the UVs of the particle match to the UVs of the whole object, you have to divide the UVs by the number of lines in the x-axis and by the number of columns in the y-axis. Then you need to offset these values by the position of the particle inside the grid. So for example, if we have like 100 uh, lines, then here this one is at like position 10, right? So it's going to be 0.1 because the value in the end needs to be from zero to one. So that's why we are divided by the total, basically. Then you need to add the offsets of that here. And finally, we add to center it to our particles because otherwise it's gonna be great in the particle, but then a little bit in the side, so like that. Okay, I just forgot, sorry, to add the uniforms. So remember, we have lines and columns. So these are floats. Okay, and I'll need actually to add them here, right? In number lines. And you embed columns. And OK. And now we can finally use the texture values. And here, instead of using a vtex curve, we have to use what we created. OK, I think it's working well, but I think um, here I just inverse the um, NB lines and NB columns. So let me change that. I think it was like that. <clears throat> yeah. All right, cool. So. Basically, these are kind of like complex UVs calculations, but once you really get into it, you you just need like to write it on a paper. That's usually what I do, and that's how I find the solution. Uh, so it took me, I think, a little bit of time to to make this UVs calculation. Uh, the tricky part was the fact that each particle needs to have like a part of the um, of the texture itself and not just being one color particle. Basically, each particle has multiple colors and to create this effect. And so basically, you have it. So that's how you can make it work. And now that we have that, let's make it look better by changing the background of the scene. First of all, so here we can put it to zero. So it's black. And once we have that, maybe we can a little bit uh, increasing the I think the point size a bit, right? I think eight was great, cool. 
So we have that. <clears throat> so we have that already. I think it's working great. And here, okay. So now that we have that, one thing we can do to optimize it a little bit is to remove the particles if they are black, right? Because we only want to add the white particles. Okay, so to do that, we are just going to go to the fragment shader and here you're gonna say, okay, if these values, so here is gray values, so we can take any values of R, R G, or B, but if R, G, or B are smaller than zero one, that means if it's really dark, then you can say discard. And by doing that, we are just basically removing all the particles, all the pixels, I would say even, uh, because it's in the fragments, all the pixels that are not, that are dark. So let's see. Okay. Let's have a look. And if you look closely now, if I'm rotating, okay, you can see that now the black particles have been removed. Right, so pretty great. That's kind of the effect that we want. And so it's also better um, in terms of uh, performance, right? Because you have less particles. You don't have less particles though. Um, to have less particles, you have to remove that in the vertex shaders. But here for the this type of texturing that we're doing, uh, it's easier to remove it in the fragment shader. Okay, <clears throat> cool. So now we can add a little thing to improve the particles. Okay, so now I don't think we see it really clear <clears throat> in big, but feel free to full screen the video right now. Uh, as you can see, if I zoom out a bit and I'm changing, you can see a lot of artifacts, right? So this issue is not looking great, right? It's pretty ugly and, and it's, yeah, no, it's not looking great. What's happening is also what we call uh, Z fighting in uh, video games. That's basically the um, WebGL is like drawing the, the particles in the same time. So if they are overlapping each other, it doesn't know which one you should draw first. Usually you always draw uh, the thing that is in front in the last because it's, one, it's gonna be like basically overlapping. But here it's like drawing it in orderly way. So it's not <coughs> looking great if they are all overlapping each other. Okay, so to fix that, <coughs> in 3GS you can use a depth test and a depth right and a depth right. By default it's true. And here we're gonna put them to false, and that way it's gonna fix this uh, Z index issue that we have. So here Yeah, sorry, well, not in the right file. So here in the scene, uh, you can just add here in the shader material. Uh, yep, sorry. <clears throat> you have to add depth test, depth test tray to false. And depth, because, and um, also I'm doing that because um, we are going to move the particles after that. And if they don't know which one to draw first, it's going to be complicated. So by doing this uh, depth test, it's not doing the calculation to say, oh, this one should be first or not. It's doing, doing, uh, doing them sorry, always in front. So they are not going to be fighting, basically. So let's see now. OK. And now if I zoom out, you can see it's way cleaner, right? I don't know if you can see it really well, but it's super clean. And we don't have this. Z fight uh, thing. Z fight, sorry. Z fight thing. All right, why is it? Okay. <laughs> I think I have like some corals here. Whatever. Okay, cool. It's looking much better now. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so now we've seen how to use a texture and put it inside of a particles, inside a grid of particles, and make it match the texture by changing the UVs. Uh, but now we want to, now that we can just having fun and make the particles move, right? Because it's cool to have a particle, but if you're not moving the particles, then why bother having particles, right? So here you can see in what I did here, uh, I make them appear from behind the camera and the destination will be the Z, the zero position of D. So we're gonna do that uh, as well. So this effect. All right, so for that, <clears throat> and you see it's gonna be pretty easy. So now we will gonna play with the vertex shader. We don't need the fragment shader anymore because we are just doing everything for the colors is already there. And we just basically want to move the positions of the particles. So remember the positions are here in the begin vertex. So let me begin vertex and project vertex, right? And you can see here, um, the position are used are being calculated by the model view matrix and basically by where the camera is. But we are not gonna really change that. However, we're gonna change what is before, right? We're gonna change the positions of here, of transformed. Basically the position of the, the particles. So here, let's say, what if I want to move all the particles on the left? I can just do the X plus, I don't know, 20. And it should move everything, right? So let's see. Oops, okay, sorry, it's working. It's just that 20 was not enough to see it, but here 100, you can see it's moving. So that's how we're gonna change the values, but we want to change the Z value, right? So we want to change this value. Here we are applying that to all the particles, right? We are not doing any distinctions between a particle and another. So to do that, we're gonna use attributes again. Remember at the very beginning, we created a grid of positions. Well, what we can do is we're gonna create another grid that is saying, hey, when you're starting the animation, the position should be this in its initial position grid, and then it's going to be to the final position grid. So basically, we are just gonna do the same here, but we're gonna do another array, call it init positions, and here we're gonna get new points that we want. Okay, so first of all, let's <coughs> comment that. <coughs> so here we're gonna say, we're gonna create what we call an init point. And now feel free to be creative. And that's basically where the grid will come from. So here what I'm, I was doing is I was doing, uh, keeping the same uh, X and Y position over the Z. I'm gonna use a random float from 3GS Math Utils. So this function is come with 3GS and it's basically giving you a random number uh, between two values. And we're gonna say, I think it was uh, from 400 to, oops, to this, for example. And then we're gonna put these values inside our init position. We're gonna use the spread operators again because we're gonna use a float array as well but this time with init points. And here we're gonna use the same thing, but we're gonna call that init position. We're adding a new attribute to our, to our grid. Here we're gonna use this array. We're gonna say 32 because it's not 32 and we're gonna put here. Okay, so now we have added another information, another grid of coordinates that is different. It looks similar, but as you can see, the Z is different. 
And now in the vertex shader, we're gonna change this value and we're gonna say transform will be equal to, so that's an attribute that we added. Just know that the attribute position is already included. You just don't see, but because we're using a shader material, it's there by default. And here we are saying, because they are vector3, remember, init position. So the position for x particles. And I'm getting an error. Mm, let's see. No, I'm not getting an error. OK, I think that's because uh, it's way too strong, <laughs> the value that I just put. Let's see, so 10 and 100 maybe. OK, uh, as you can see, it's doing some random uh, weird things. And also, as you can see, uh, this is not centered. Right, this is not centered. That's because here, uh, when, doing, when doing geometry center, it's going to work only, it's going to only change the positions of your uh, buffer geometry, but it's not gonna use your custom attributes that you added. So we kind of have to do it ourselves. Well, it's not super complex. We are just gonna say minus line divided by two and minus, uh, this should be lines and this should be columns. OK, now it's centered. And as you can see, uh, it's totally random in the Z index. All right, so that's kind of what we want. But then we want them to move from this position to the initial position, to the vertices position. So for that, we're going to use a value that will be interpolate from 0 to 1. Uh, for that, we're going to use the uh, GUI because it's pretty convenient to do that, right? So we're going to say, we're going to call it progress. It's going to be zero. And here in the GUI, we're going to call it progress from zero to one. And we're going to say, on change I'm gonna remove this one because we don't need it uh, on change change the uniforms uh, <clears throat> so to get access to the uniform we actually need to probably do something like material equal to feel free to reorganize your code but that's just for the be fast. Here, U materials, uniforms, uh, value, and we're gonna say that is going to be. Uh, sorry, we're gonna create. I'm gonna pass it at a, as a uniform. So U progress. Uh, so zero beginning and here is going to be your progress value. It's going to be this value basically. So this GUI dot progress. Okay, so that we just created here a little slider that we're going to use later. So now that we have this, this slider here, we are going to change the position. So here, what we're going to do is that we're going to say, OK, so I want the transform position to start from the init position. And if the progress is 0, everything here is multiplied. So basically, if the progress is 0, this value is 0. And it's going to be the init position. But if this value is 1, then here the value is going to be 
So position minus the unit position multiply by one. So that means it's going to be position because this value and this value will uh, just be uh, subtract, right? Because the result of that will be basically this is going to be the result. Why? So if you have init pos plus position minus init position, the final value will just be position, right? So that's basically a quick interpolation calculator to get this. And I forgot to add the uniform here. Oops, sorry. In the vertex shader, we have a U progress. Okay. And now, if I'm going from 0 to 1, see, it's creating the image that we want. And also see it on the side, so it's a little bit cooler, as you can see. Nice, so we have this nice effect. But now, what if we animate it? So to animate things, I'm going to use JZAP, which is a great library to animate. <coughs> Like most of our tutorials, I'm using that. And we're going to just uh, do it like that. So here, do that. OK, here, I'm just going to use JZAP. So I'm going to import JZAP. Should be in the, in the repo already. And oh, it's already working. We are basically saying. Uh, take this value, take it from 0 to 1 in 2.5 seconds using an easing value. And here, uh, to make it look better, I think I use different values. Yeah, I use 0 from 500. So it's a little bit more, more randomness. OK. See? Right. I think it's looking great, right? We have our. Our texture that is showing like that. So it's almost what we have here. It's actually the same effect. Cool. Um, now that you know how to do that, feel free to. Here you can see I I create another type of init position. Where now it's coming on the on the on the left. Um, but yeah, be creative and. Create like any type of init position that you want, and it's gonna just do the transition using one uniform and just with this line. So it's super easy to make this appear effect. Uh, yeah, one thing I need to add to make it look even nicer is we're gonna play with the opacity and we're gonna just say, okay, so here. Uh, if the, um, the progress is zero, it's going to be opacity zero, basically alpha zero. And then if the progress is at maximum at one, it's going to be the default alpha value. Here, don't forget to add the uniform. See now, OK. I don't know if you see the difference, but it's a little bit better now that we have the fading at the same time as we and the particles are coming to create the image. OK, I think it's looking pretty great. OK, so now that we've seen that, then let's add a wave effect. So to add a, to add a wave effect, sorry, we're going to use a sinus uh, function. And we're going to apply it on our Z axis for each particle. So here, we can just do sinus. And here, we're going to add values. So we're going to use, um, what we're going to do is we're going to offset each of the particles based on his coordinates. So remember, the coordinates are here. It's x and y, because each particle is basically a coordinate. So we're going to add this to that. Okay, I don't know if we see it. OK, 
here you can see we have a sinus wave it's not looking pretty great but basically we have a sinus wave but we need to to change the frequency because here the waves are too close to each other so to change the frequency you just need to pretty simple to multiply it by a frequency so we're gonna create a uniform and we're gonna apply this value to find the correct one and to find the correct frequency that we want uh, it's pretty great to again use the GUI so we're gonna find the value more easily <clears throat> So we're going to create a wave frequency. Actually, oh yeah, let's just say frequency. We are not using it for nothing else. So it's going to be zero by default. I don't know. Don't forget to add it here to your uniform. <clears throat> here's going to be You can actually do the same here by default. That way you use the default value that you have here. Um, <coughs> sorry, it was progress, I think. OK, so we have that. Then in the GUI, we're going to add a new slider called frequency. And we're going to use the U frequency, remember. I think from 0 to 1 is great as well. Uh, and here we have to change the frequency, the U frequency. It's it working. OK, sorry, it's just that here I forgot to put U frequency. OK, yeah. So here the frequency, I just changed it from 0 to 100. <clears throat> And here you can see, you can find basically you, the value that you want. Here actually, we should use one. <laughs> uh, just to make sure here to multiply by U frequency. <clears throat> and here we're gonna have a look. Okay, yeah, as you can see, it's starting to make waves, right? So that's what we want. And I think the wave that I want Frequency will be, I don't know, I think, yeah, 0, 27 is great. <clears throat> so here I'm going to put 0, 27. Oops. <clears throat> okay. So now we have our frequency. And we also wanted to make it move because now we have only make it move on the x-axis but we want it to make it move on the y-axis as well so for that just need to do this thing just add it by the y position as well and now you can see we have a nice wave nice wave like that <clears throat> okay and we can make it increase or no i think i like it so don't like that <clears throat> Feel free to change the frequency and find what you want. Cool. I think I like it like that. <clears throat> like that. <clears throat> Sorry. And now we can finally uh, make it move. So for that, we're going to just use the time. And luckily, with the request animation frame, you already have by default the time value. We can also use the delta time for optimization reasons. Here, I'm just going to use the time. <clears throat> and OK, remember, we have our materials. And we're going to create a uniform new time. And the value will be time. Don't forget to add it to your uniform, as usual. So value by default will be 0. <clears throat> And then in the vertex shader, we're going to use our time uniform. 
<clears throat> and to make this wave uh, move, we're going to add this value to our sinus. Also, I forget to add the amplitude. I'm going to see that right away. OK, so here, as you can see, it's flickering super fast. <laughs> so that means we need to reduce the, the value here. So we're just going to divide it by 1,000, for example. Here you can see it's moving really slowly. So we have a nice wave effect. And if we want to increase the amplitude, then we just here need to multiply by an amplitude. So we can create cons value amplitude. And it's going to be, I don't know, 10. <clears throat> Maybe it's too much. We'll see. And you're just going to have to multiply the sinus value, so the final value, by this. And it's going to, OK, yeah, <laughs> 10 is way too much. Um, but we can say maybe 5, I think. Just wait. Yeah, I think 5 is a lot. Maybe 2. I think 2 is great. OK, cool. So now we have our wave, and we have our up here effect. And I think that's pretty much it. So it's already great. We have our RPR effect, we have our wave. You can play with this effect. You can like change the, the frequency of the wave. Uh, you can change the speed of the wave. You can do a bunch of stuff. And yeah, uh, be creative. Um, again, I didn't do the touch effect because that's a no other story. You have to create uh, another canvas and register the value of your mouse, and then do a render to texture. So it's quite a bit complex, but if you support my channel on Patreon, you can get uh, access to this uh, code already, and you can just uh, try to under understand it. It's commented already, so, so you can try to reproduce. And uh, yeah, feel free to add any effect that you want, like that, uh, like that. Be creative, like here I use text, so you can like write something in particles. Like, I don't know, it's always fun to play with particles. Uh, so I'm sure you will find some cool stuff to do. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, feel free to send me your work if you finish your exercise and made it like different or something. Um, no judgment, I'll be super happy to to see the, the final result. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.